the second law of thermodynamics. So um, there's a few things that we talk about when we talk about thermodynamics. That's basically talking about um, the heat of a reaction, the heat involved in a reaction. When we talk about thermodynamics, we're typically talking about temperature, changes in temperatures, um, which come from changes in energies. And um, that's, that's a very basic definition for a second law of thermodynamics. Um, enthalpy is uh, one component we're gonna talk about. So it's measuring kilojoules per mole. If you have some a negative enthalpy, that means it's an exothermic reaction. If it's a positive enthalpy, that means it's endothermic. That's because again, it's measured in kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules is a measurement of energy. So when you have energy exiting the system for exothermic, that we show that as a negative sign. When it's an endothermic reaction, positive absorbing energy, we show that as a positive sign. So an example in this table here, we already talked about combustion and we already talked about how it's an exothermic reaction. And you can see the, um, the heat of combustion for all of these different compounds um, and act, all these different molecules, really, that um, they're all negative. That's because energy is leaving all of those systems. These are all exothermic reactions, um, which we already knew about combustion. Entropy is the second part, um, and it's the level of disorder within a system. So disorder. So that means the more randomness you have, the more entropy you have. So in, um, in particles, we tend to think gas particles have the most randomness, right? They're the ones that fly all over the room, and they can go anywhere in a container in a box. Um, but solids have the most order. Um, they are the ones where the molecules are still moving, but they keep their shape. Um, they can't change shape. So solids have the least entropy because they have the most order. I know that least most is hard to remember. Um, so the most disorder is the most, has the most entropy. Um, so in this picture, you can see like the levels of entropy um, over here to the left where we have really high randomness that has the most entropy. And then over here, the low randomness, that's the least amount of entropy. And then it is kind of a sliding scale. Um, things that would cause more entropy, so more like disorder within a system is high temperature, more volume and less pressure. So let's think about that in terms of a gas. If I have a gas and I increase the temperature in those gas molecules, they move faster. So there's more disorder. If I have a gas and I put it in a bigger container, then it has more places to go. So it's more disorder. If I have a pressure exerted on a gas and I release the pressure, that's the same thing as giving it more volume, right? If I release the pressure, it now has more places to go. Um, so again, it increases the, the disorder, the randomness of those molecules. Um, so usable or like ordered energy is lost and usually creates um, a higher entropy system. So uh, a, 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 I guess a good way to like relate this would be thinking about it in the sense of like the universe, um, which is an isolated system according to the Big Bang Theory, right? Everything was once one tiny small piece of mass and it sort of like exploded and it's we can see we can we have this me measurable expansion right in our entire universe um so the fact that all of those um stars planets every all the comets all the ash everything in our space right everything in our universe is expanding outwards um that means like the volume's getting bigger um which again allows for more entropy Entropy, entropy, entropy will increase. Um, another example is gasoline in its liquid form has low entropy, right? Liquids tend to be more order, but once you use it, once we use it, we put it through sort of a combustion process where we can create carbon dioxide, which is gas, and water in its vapor form, which again, also have higher entropy. They're, they're gases, um, which have more entropy than liquids. Uh, finally, we relate entropy and enthalpy in the Gibbs free energy equation. You guys are not going to have to calculate this. I just wanted you to see it and know what it stands for. So Gibbs free energy um, basically 
uh, is the equation that tells us whether a reaction will happen spontaneously or not. So we compare the enthalpy and the entropy. So enthalpy is the delta H here, and then entropy, the disorder, that's this delta S here, and then T stands for temperature. Um, so when we can we can perform this calculation and we can decide if a reaction is going to happen um, by itself or if it needs some sort of catalyst um, to make it go. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, the change in Gibbs energy, so the, the triangle just means change. So delta H is change in enthalpy, delta S is change in entropy, T is just temperature, and then delta G is change in the Gibbs free energy. So it's the calculation answer. Um, if it's less than zero, then that means that it's spontaneous. So how could you be like less than zero? That means negative. So negative for energy means an exothermic reaction, but negative for delta G means a spontaneous reaction. Um, and then positive means that it would need a catalyst to move forward.